All right, shoulder day. If this is one of your first time catching one of these videos, these are just my own personal workouts. These are not instructional how-to videos. These are uncut, full length, start to finish. So with that being said, we are doing shoulders today, or at least I'm doing shoulders today. If you wanna follow along, be my guest. I'm gonna be doing a combination of dumbbells with resistance bands, doing some cool exercises where you can hit the delts from some different angles that are kind of unique. So I've already done a warm up here. Make sure before you hit your shoulder workout, get in there, work those rotator cuffs, some internal rotation, external rotation, etc. loosen up. I like to throw in some arm circles front to back before I get started. So with that said, I'm gonna squeeze behind you, grab some bands. Now, one of the reasons I really like incorporating bands into my shoulder day is that we can create resistance in different planes. So when we're training with dumbbells, we only have one plane of resistance. That's the vertical plane due to gravity, right? With bands, we're no longer relying on gravity. So depending on where we anchor these, we can create resistance, like I said, in different planes and hit the muscle in different ways. And so First thing we're gonna do is a shoulder press. We're gonna anchor the band nice and low here. I recommend anchoring your bands to something that's soft, that's not going to tear the bands apart. This is a universal uh, anchor from Undersun. So it's got some nice soft neoprene padding in there. And that way I can attach it to a carabiner. I don't like attaching directly to it. Can you? Yes, but it's gonna wear out your band faster. So if you want them to last longer, I don't recommend it. So we're gonna be doing a dumbbell press with the bands. Let me show you what it looks like without the dumbbells first. So I'm stepping away from my anchor point here and now as I press up, I don't just have resistance in that vertical plane like we talked about. Now I'm having to resist this. And so as I press up, those rear delts are really firing. I also feel it in the middle delt a little bit more. So instead of this being more anterior delt dominant like most shoulder presses are, I feel like you get a better balance between all three heads of the deltoid there. So we don't need a ton of weight here. These are uh, pretty challenging as is. So mess around with it, find whichever way you want or is most comfortable for you for grabbing the band. Uh, I like to just kind of drape it over and lock it in with my thumb like this. And we're gonna press straight up just like that. Five, six, and since it's a little lighter, I'm gonna do a few more reps. Try to make up for the intensity with a little bit more volume. Ah, that's 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, one more, 15, oh, nice, let's feel good. It'll definitely give you a different feeling than a traditional shoulder press. We have a tendency to think we're doing shoulder press that so we're using a lot of middle delt, but the reality is probably 60 to 70% is anterior delt. Maybe they say 10 to 20% is middle delt and very little is rear delt, maybe five, possibly 10%. Doing it this way, you're really changing that dynamic. 
So I'm gonna go up in resistance a little here. You do it two ways. You can do it with a band, use a heavier band, or heavier dumbbells. That felt good in the rear delt, so I don't wanna change my band. So instead I'm gonna go with heavier dumbbells. <sighs> and you see how I'm just locking that band right in between my index finger and thumb. <clears throat> and step back. <sighs> Control that rep speed, nice and smooth. Six, seven, eight, oh yeah. Nice. In between sets, I like to stretch a little bit. If you're spending all this time contracting muscle, shortening the muscle, then spend a little bit of time doing the opposite, lengthening the muscle by stretching. All right, that... Uh, that felt great, but I, it was a little more anterior delt dominant. So I'm thinking about maybe switching up here just for fun. So I'm gonna go down just one level with the dumbbells and go up with the band. I could either add a smaller band to it or I could go up a band it's probably easier see how this feels so our third set final set of this exercise so this is where I'm definitely gonna try to push myself a little bit. And if I hit that wall, then I'll just take a breath, shake it off, a little rest pause method, and see if I get one or two more reps. Really make the set count. Oh boy, here we go. That's where, like I said, I'm going to shake it off. Try to get two more. Nice. Yeah. That felt good. So that was a, uh, a better balance for me. As far as working the deltoids front to back. So the other day, I might actually leave this here for a second. The other day I did 
a shoulder press where the band was anchored to my side. And so by pressing up, now again, we've got the band trying to pull our hand this way. So it's forcing us to counter that, really making that middle delt fire. So we're gonna give that a try here. Maybe do the first one with bands only. Get a feel for it. And then we'll add the dumbbell into it. Let's start with this one. Let's see how this feels. Yeah, it feels pretty good. I'm gonna grab one of these fat grips. These actually work really well for a movement like this because otherwise, grip is a little awkward here. The band's pulling across my pinky. It's just not a very strong grip. But if we slide the band into that, now that's much better grip on it. I like that. All right, here we go. Pressing out just slightly. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Oh man. So even that's the shoulder press feels totally different than the first one we did. Now early in my training, I used to subscribe to these different ideas of, you know, behind the neck presses in an attempt to hit more of the middle delts. And it really doesn't. It doesn't change that dynamic very, very much. This completely does. So this is probably one of the more unique ways I've been able to switch up my shoulder training. Before doing it with bands, I started messing around with it with the cable machine. So you can try it with that as well. You don't have to use bands. I prefer them because it's an easy way to do it in combination with the free weights. Nice. So I'm going to drop down in resistance with the band and do it in combination with the dumbbell. And where did that? There it is. So that's the nice thing about these. Now we can lock it right in to the dumbbell. Like so. Same thing. Four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ah, uh, ten. Wow, that's tough. Now, the farther you are from the anchor point, 
The more that plane of resistance is horizontal, the more I feel that middle belt firing. The closer I am, the closer it is to a traditional shoulder press, and I still feel it more in the anterior delt. So mess around with that. Try to different distances, and that's where you're also going to have to adjust the tension of the band or the size of the band. If that band is too heavy, then I'm not gonna be able to get as far away and still be able to press it. So just have to experiment, see what you like. Nine, ten. Ho, oh, nice. That's good stuff right there. Is that three? No, that was only two. Ah. Wishful thinking. Whew. All right. Here we go. Last set. You know, with these singles, single arm press, you can even change the angle of your body if you want to. This gives you a lot of different options. So instead of pressing out here to the side, and instead of pressing here facing our anchor point, you can even try like a three quarter angle. And I imagine even that will feel totally different. So like I said, this gives you a lot of different options. I'd even try it on a set. Maybe do one set facing it, do one set where you're parallel, and one where you're maybe at a 45 degree angle to see how it feels. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, man, that was tough. Mm -mm -mm. Stretch it out. That's good stuff. 
Now, normally, I would have to rely on more isolation exercises to try to hit the middle delts more. So that's going to be your side raises or also called lateral raises. Or to hit the rear delts, you're going to have to rely on some sort of rear fly. Another option is a compound movement, but that's going to be your face pulls. So this is just another way to start to hit the middle and rear delt more while doing a compound movement like a press. So it's fun. Uh, start off as something novel, just to do different, but after experiencing the way that it felt, really liked it. And so now it's something that I'm starting to incorporate more and more. All right. So that was three sets. Now, when we're doing shoulders, it really depends on what your particular goal is. You know, first step is doing an assessment from your anterior delt front of the shoulder to the middle to the rear. As far as balance and development, everyone's a little different. A lot of my friends do a lot of chest press, you know, whether it's bench press, dumbbell press, shoulder press. A lot of them have very developed anterior delts, and so they have a tendency to focus more on rear delts, middle delts. That was me, just based on the way I trained for a very long time. Uh, you know, do you want to just focus on maybe having that wider look, you know, broader shoulders, that nice V taper. So a lot of people focus more on middle delts. So that's the fun of what I call bodybuilding style training. It has nothing to do with stepping on a bodybuilding stage, but it's literally building your body, shaping it the way you want, sculpting it the way you want. And to me, that's the big difference between say powerlifting or just a goal of strength versus like I said, wanting to selectively put muscle where you want to put muscle. With that said, I've always prioritized rear delts a bit more and middle delts because those were more neglected in my own training. So we're going to do lateral raises. We've been doing them with bands all along, which I really like, but today we're gonna do them with a cable machine. If you don't have a cable machine, then you can do them with bands. If you don't have bands, you can do them obviously with dumbbells. Downside about dumbbells, we don't have any resistance from here to about there. So when I am using dumbbells by themselves, a lot of times I'll stick to this range of motion, stop short here, keeping constant tension. With bands or with a cable machine, I've got tension all the way through the range of motion starting here, which is one of the reasons why I prefer it. Going back to what we just did, you can combine bands with dumbbells and I like that even better sometimes. So whether you're using a cable machine or bands, you want our position to be nice and low here. A lot of times I'll even have my starting position here right in front of my body because I have tension even here in the beginning of the range of motion. It's not really necessary though. So I'm, gonna, I'm right about here. So hand right in front of my body, squeezing right out to the sides. I stop just about ear height because that really is the effective range of motion for a strong contraction in the middle delts. Anything higher than that, you start relying more on your trapezius. So for me, I'm just trying to put the focus more on middle delts. It also minimizes risk of impingement. There was some of the connective tissue, the tendons there in the shoulder. I'm not particularly a big fan of shoulder pain. Here we go. Oh, that's perfect. Shake it out for a second and go right to the other side.
así. Nine. Uh, ten. Nice. So probably one of the biggest changes in how I do these versus much earlier in my training, I used to get really hung up on how much weight I was using. I'd use a lot of movement at the body, bending the knees to generate momentum, kind of swinging upwards. So using that momentum to get the weight up. But a lot of times it was too heavy for me to even pause there at the top. So it was kind of like up to the top and back down. And it just looked like this. So over time, my mindset is if I can't pause at the top just for a millisecond, then that means I can't control the weight. And that means it's just a little too heavy. So that's my test. Go just heavy enough to where I can pause there for a millisecond. You don't want to make this easy. It's not about training with light weights. It's training with a weight that you can control. And that's kind of my own personal mantra, what I tell myself. I want to train as hard as I can, use as much resistance as I can, but with control. So it's not about lightweight versus heavyweight. You know, heavy is all relative, right? Something that is light can feel heavy depending on how much control, how much you're actively thinking about contracting that muscle with every rep, which is going to make you fatigue quicker and it's going to make a lighter weight start to feel heavier faster. You know, whether you're pausing there at the top, controlling those eccentrics, you can make a lightweight feel heavy. And conversely, you make a heavyweight feel light by using really sloppy form and relying on momentum. So I got to start this side. Seven. Uh, one more. Uh, I'd say another difference between a cable or a band versus a dumbbell. When I come out to the side here, that resistance, I feel that tension more on the middle delt, but with a cable machine where that cable is coming across the front of your body or same thing with a band, we're having to resist that almost like we did with our first exercises. So it's forcing that rear delt to fire to stabilize your arm. You have to isometrically contract that rear delt. So you get a nice little burn in the rear delt with these as well. Nice. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, I gotta ask, was that two or was that three? <laughs> One of those days. 
That's the problem with talking too much. Makes it hard to count reps or even sets. Sometimes I feel obligated to talk just so it's not so boring. But you know, the reality is if this was a real workout, we were training together, we might not talk at all the entire workout. And sometimes those are the best workouts. All right, here we go. Six, seven, that's eight. I'll shake it off. I'm gonna get two more here. That's that rest pause technique again. It's a way to kick up the intensity, get some extra reps when you don't have a partner to spot you. Nice. All right, let's finish this off right away. Two more. One more. Ah, Side's a little stronger. Didn't have to stop. Ah. Nice. All right, we're going to do one last exercise. We're going to work traps here. Last week we were doing some uh, dumbbell shrugs. And I was saying the one of the things I like to do is even lean forward just a little bit. So instead of shrugging straight up, shrugging backwards. Remember your trapezius, shaped like a trapezoid. It has muscle fibers running in different directions so it doesn't just lift our shoulders up. It also pulls our shoulder blades back. So I like a little bit of uh, almost in between there where you're getting both. It's really easy to do with the cable machine. So that's what we're gonna do here. And I think probably just gonna use a short straight bar. Doesn't have to be. You can attach two handles to it. You can do it with a rope if you wanted to whatever you prefer. See how this feels. That's a little light. Now most of us are typically pretty strong in this position. That's why you see people shrugging a lot of weight. I used to get really nasty headaches just because, you know, the muscle would get tight and would start to pull here towards the base of the skull. Especially because I was using kind of shitty form. <clears throat> you know, really slinging them up there. So now, just like all my other exercise, prefer to use a little more control and focus on getting that nice isometric squeeze 
and then controlling that eccentric and the concentric both. So we don't need to go quite as heavy here. So first thing, we're not gonna do it from this position this close because this would be more of a traditional shrug. We're gonna take a step back. And now, see we're shrugging backwards at a slight angle. It's probably about 45 degrees, looks like. Isometric, control the eccentric. When I'm done with this set, I'll share a little visualization trick that I was trying to focus on. That's uh, a nice contraction. So I've said the same thing with rowing movements. You have to think about where you initiate the movement from. Do we initiate the movement with the hands first? If we do, then we're using more biceps. Do we initiate the movement by driving those elbows back and letting the forearms and hands follow? Do we initiate the movement by moving the scapula or the shoulder blades first and then driving the elbows? That's what I prefer. Well, similar concept here. We want to keep our arms straight. So resist the temptation to think about pulling the hands. If you do, you'll start to notice you'll get that little bit of a bend there in the elbow. We just want to think of our whole arm and hands just as like a giant hook or a rope. They're going along for the ride. So everything happens in the shoulder. So for me personally, I'm thinking about not only lifting my shoulders, but squeezing them back. Almost like if I put a tennis ball between your shoulder blades. I was saying it yesterday. I really like shoulder day for the last, uh, I guess we're going on this week eight, week nine of this particular split that we're doing. I've been doing shoulders on Friday. So it's a nice way to end the week. It's a fun workout. It's not a, quite as much of a ball buster as a leg day. But shoulders are also fun because they make such a difference in your physique when you develop your shoulders. It really is pretty transformative. All right, here we go. Nice. That's seven. Two more. Got a few more in the gas tank. There's no magic in 10. If you can do two more, do two more. If you can do four more, do four more. All right, we got one more. So when I first started training, I don't really hear it the same now like I used to, but everyone used to shrug up and then roll their shoulder blades back. It was this rolling motion like this. Reflecting back on it, I guess probably the attempt was to hit more of the middle traps by squeezing our shoulder blades together. Two problems with that. One, when we're using a dumbbell, remember our plane of resistance is vertical. So we come to the top here, 
even if we try to squeeze back, there's no resistance from the dumbbell there. Two, that rolling motion has a tendency to kind of grind everything in there. You know, there's very small spaces between bone and bone where you have tendons, that connective tissue. And so they have a tendency to get pinched in there and pinched. And that's what causes inflammation. And that's what we call tendonitis. And that's where you start getting those nagging injuries there in your shoulder. So I really try to avoid any shoulder movement that's going to sit there and grind. All right, last one of these and then we're done. Step back. Squeeze as high as you can. With these, I'm almost thinking about visualizing my shoulder coming right up to the bottom of my ear. Good stuff. Now, depending on what you did for a warm up, if you came in and you did some of your rotator cup exercises, I recommend that at the beginning of the workout. But if you didn't, you can also come in at the very end of the workout. I always recommend it on shoulder day, just for overall balance between some of the bigger primary movers when we're doing shoulder press, which of course can be the deltoids, the triceps. We want to make sure that those smaller stabilizer muscles that we call our rotator cuff, they were conditioning those as well, because if you have a disparity between the strength of those bigger movers and these smaller stabilizer muscles, that only makes sense that it's going to lead to injury. These muscles are going to end up overpowering these muscles. So make sure you take the time and go ahead and develop those small rotator cuff muscles, just good preventative maintenance, if nothing else. So. Make sure to squeeze those in. That's a wrap for today. And I will see you next week. We're gonna come back with chest and tries.